Hey guys, welcome to the high ground. My name is Fabio. In the last episode, we talked about how to set up a proper repel system. In this episode, we will have a look at emergency repels and improvised repels. The first variant I'd like to show you is the ultimate emergency variant when you not even have a harness. It's called the body repel or the Dülfer seat, um, named after Hans Dülfer, who was a German alpinist. And this is a variant that is physically very taxing, but it's still better, especially for long repels, than just trying to hold onto the rope because that hardly ever works in a controlled manner, especially if you would have to carry a backpack additionally. So how is this done? You have the rope. In this case, we just took two ropes that are fixed to a, let's say, table that is quenched between in a door or something like that. You go around your leg, up over your chest, around your back, and hold the rope like this. Don't, don't hold it like this, because for other repels we actually repel like this, but you will have a lot more power if you can straighten out your arm and hold on to the rope like this. This is the first version, the Dülfer sits or the body repel. For the second emergency repel I'd like to show you, you already need a carabiner and a harness, but nothing else. It's the repel with a munter hitch. Now, this repel is often used even intentionally uh, when people are just out there on classic mountaineering because it's one of the knots that people actually are proficient in tying. I don't particularly like this way of repelling um, because it has some severe downsides in my opinion. First of all, it is very hard on the rope because you will have a lot of tangles in the rope if you repel like that. And the second one, more safety relevant, is that the friction is not produced by the rope running over the carabiner's metal or through several carabiners, but the, rope, uh, the friction is produced by the rope running over the rope, which generally can lead to burn injuries of the rope and is especially problematic if you have a double rope. I will still show it to you because it's well used. Just put the munter hitch on the carabiner. Gone. Here we go. And then put the carabiner on your harness. close it up. If you want to have it like this or the other way around, it's a little bit personal preference. I found that this version is the best version for me when I have to use it. But you can see pretty clearly the rope is running over the rope and generating the friction, which is just not a good thing. I'll show you that one in detail. Now to prepare the mantra hitch, you just put the rope into the carabiner, then you make a little loop and put that into the carabiner as well. The second emergency or improvised repel and my favorite is the so-called Eaton break. You just need two carabiners for it, so it's a little bit more gear, um, well it needs a little bit more gear than just the mantra hitch, but it also avoids most of the downsides of the mantra hitch. So you can take one carabiner, it's best if you have two of them that have a similar shape. You just take the rope, pull it through the carabiner and around once. Then you take your second carabiner, just go through this one and you can see it already bites and tie it to your harness. I will, of course, in a second show you this one in detail. 
but as you can see the friction is actually generated by the rope running through the metal and not so much by the rope running over the rope. Another upside of this setup is that the rope gets bended a lot. So if you look uh, how it goes around those carabiners, um, that leads to the rope shedding a lot of ice it would be if it would be frozen up down here. Um, that's a big advantage over the next version I'll show you. But before we start with that, let's look at the Eaton brake a little bit more in detail. Okay, let's see that again. You have the first carabiner, you pull the rope through it, and then you go around it like this. Take the second carabiner, put it in here, and you have a stable brake. The last version is the classic carabiner brake. Um, it needs a little bit more gear. You need one carabiner attached to your harness and two to um, build the actual brake with. And you do that as follows. So you again close up one carabiner and pull the rope through. This carabiner goes around the rope and then through that loop and you close it up as well and you just rig it and you would also be ready to upsile and just connect it to your harness. As you can see the rope wanders a little bit straighter. Now since I have all the same carabiners it works quite well but if this carabiner would for example be a little bit a bigger one there is a potential for this carabiner slipping in here and then having only reduced uh, braking strength, especially with iced ropes. So yes, it's, it's a good method, but uh, I would prefer the Eaton brake over this because it needs less gear and it's, in my opinion, a little bit more reliable and not as sensitive to the carabiners uh, slipping into each other. Let's watch that again. You take the carabiner, pull the rope through, take the second carabiner, go around the lower rope and through the loop on the upper side, close them and you're good to go. Fix your last carabiner to this and you can rappel down. So much for the emergency repel. Thank you for watching this video. I appreciate your time. I hope you will never need an emergency repel, at the maximum an improvised repel, because you just saw something that you want to repel down right now. If you liked that video, give us a thumbs up, subscribe to our channel, and I'd say I'll see you next time.